On today's show, we're going to talk more about the science of cold immersion therapy, also known as winter swimming in certain countries like Poland. Scientists in Poland recently found that cold water swimming actually increases levels of protective antioxidant enzymes like glutathione and glutathione peroxidase while simultaneously decreasing levels of oxidative stress in healthy adults. What I think is really fascinating about this study, and it sort of corroborates with the dossier of research supporting the health benefits of cold immersions, is that these subjects only went in a cold lake, this was during the winter in Poland, for three minutes, one time per week, which really helps to solve the question that many of you want to know, and that is the cadence or frequency at which you should embark on cold immersion therapies. A lot of people are, are curious about this. Do I need to do it every day? How many seconds do I need to stay in there? Can I do cold showers and much more? Which we're gonna get into the tactics a little bit later after I help sell you on the health benefits and talk about this dossier of research that is emerging, suggesting that cold immersions, what they do is actually uh, the, the science, the physiology, the hormetic stress that is induced from getting cold on purpose increases counter-regulatory hormones and antioxidant enzymes that have health benefits. Needless to say, these enzymes also decrease as we age. So this is a tool that we can help to we can use to increase some of these protective enzymes that might mitigate or help to uh, sort of improve the aging and, and, and support longevity associated uh, physiology uh, pathways in our body. Most importantly, though, I think that is under recognized and not talked about extensively in this recently published study that we're going to dive into is the link between getting cold on purpose and improving the very transcription factors that impact mitochondrial biogenesis. In my estimation, this is the, the main benefit linked with getting cold on purpose. We know that dysfunctional mitochondria are a hallmark of cancer, of metabolic disease, as well as neurodegenerative diseases. So we know that exercise and fasting, these are all tools that can help with mitochondrial biogenesis and mitophagy and cleaning up deranged dysfunctional mitochondria. But now we know that cold immersions actually improve the the, the signaling of a very important transcription factor known as PGC1-alpha. And this has been largely documented in animals, in both the muscle tissue and the fat tissue. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of human studies on this, but this study actually suggests that this may be another factor here because the various uh, antioxidant enzymes and, and reduction in oxidative stress biomarkers that are linked herein are within the mitochondria. And so as the scientific uh, study recently uh, published, and again, the title here is The Influence of Winter Swimming on Oxidative Stress Indicators in the Blood of Healthy Males. It found statistically significant increases in various protective antioxidant-related enzymes that are found within the mitochondria and decreased oxidative stress-related biomarkers that are, are also uh, central or close in proximity to the mitochondria. And so this shows that uh, not only can we improve levels of these enzymes, but it's a, a tool to decrease uh, oxidative stress and, and support mitochondrial health. And so this is really fascinating stuff. We're going to get into it, but first, I want to thank you for being here. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button. Be sure to leave a comment below. If you take cold showers, if you go in a cold liver, river, lake, or stream, please let me know in the comments below. Make this something social, my friends. This is a tool that centenarians, people all throughout the world, there's a group in Ireland that's been doing this for a number of years in the Isle of Man there, or Sea of Man, I might get the geography wrong, but you can Google this. Time Magazine did a big future on this back in 2014. And so cold immersions have been going on for a long time. People uh, in the in the Midwest, you know, if you look at um, uh, Michigan, you look at Minnesota, uh, people often have saunas on docks and they go from sauna to cold lake and so forth. And, and so this is a tool that you can use. And I, I, I personally have experienced so much benefit from this. So I'm trying to encourage you to do this because I know it's a little uncomfortable, but um, excellent stuff here. So here's a graphical abstract. What you have here is 28 healthy males. The average age was 39 years old. They don't have pre-existing health conditions and so forth. They went into a cold lake you can see here there's snow. They had to cut a little uh, piece out of the lake here. It almost appears as though this man is naked. I'm not <laughs> quite sure on that. But anyway, here's a graphical abstract. They only went to the, into this cold lake for three minutes, one day per week. But leading up to the study during, during the fall and the summer, they did extract blood from these uh, male subjects before uh, to get a baseline to see what are the levels of oxidative stress-related biomarkers and glutathione and such. And then... Um, the after, uh, I think it was an eight week study, right? They went in the, the cold lake uh, for three minutes, once a week, and then they drew blood. I think after the last session, 
uh, 30 minutes after, then 24 hours uh, after, and did a bunch of analysis here. And essentially what they found is that uh, the repeated cold exposure upregulated most antioxidant defense enzymes, and this led to an attenuation of indicators of oxidative stress at baseline and acute pulse in uh, response to cold exposure. And it, they conclude that due to regular cold exposure, the antioxidant barrier of winter swimmers was stimulated. This short uh, ice bath uh, cold session was seen to be an effective intervention, inducing and promoting positive adaptive changes, such as increased antioxidant capacity of the organism. And for historical context, the scientists say cold is often used in medicine to reduce inflammation. As a result of winter swimming, physiological changes occur immediately, while repeated cold exposure, uh, repeated exposure to cold develops adaptive mechanisms that also affect health. I want to pause here and emphasize here, repeated exposure to cold. So, okay, it's one thing to go with your buddies and jump in a cold lake during the winter on New Year's Day, right? It's another thing to take a cold shower every single day. Start out with 30 seconds, 45 seconds. This can literally change your life. When I started doing this in 2012, it made many health improvements in my in my physiology, my ability to tolerate cold, uh, recovery. I feel like I can maintain the, I used to have all sorts of lingering uh, pains and aches and things like that from weightlifting and playing sports in high school uh, and, and don't suffer. And I feel like I can just tolerate a lot more uh, exercise load and volume and still recover and feel healthy. And so I think, um, and many people report that as well. So the scientists continue to say, the type of cold adaptation depends on the intensity of cold stress and the individual factors such as body fat percentage, general uh, physiological health uh, and diet and so forth. They also say exposure to cold induces a significant stress response similar to acute exercise with increases in cortisol. Oh my gosh, cortisol, that thing that, oh, everyone is so scared of cortisol. If you're scared of cortisol, please never eat again because eating increases cortisol as well. Guess what? Getting up in the morning, waking up increases cortisol. If you're scared of cortisol, never do the healthy thing that everyone is talking about and looking in the sun in the morning. Guess what? Looking and getting morning sunlight increases cortisol. We need to stop framing cortisol as this bad thing. Cortisol, a, 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 a transient acute increase in cortisol, not a bad thing. What we want to get away from is the chronic overexpression of cortisol, the chronic stress, the uh, cortisol in a mal that's malaligned with your body's circadian rhythm. Looking at your phone before bed is much more damaging to your body's cortisol awakening response than is going in an ice bath. I just want to mention that. They say that um, cold exposure also increases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Yes, these are counter-regulatory stress hormones. This is an acute transient increase. It's not a persistent increase. It's not going to perturb your body's circadian clock system. In fact, there's evidence to suggest that getting cold on purpose in the morning might even foster and support and entrain your body's biologic rhythms. So that's important. They also say acute exercise and cold exposure are known to increase levels of PGC-1 alpha in muscle and adipose tissue. This is it, this is long known to increase the antioxidant defenses as well as mitochondrial biogenesis. Okay, so now starting out with table three here, this is the enumeration of the specific antioxidant enzymes that have been increased above baseline at the and at the end of the winter swimming season. What you see here is the 8-ISO-PGF2 alpha. So I, I believe this is related to uh, neutralizing uh, pro-oxidative stress markers on lipids and lipid structures in the body. So you see that this uh, increases quite significantly as well as the 4-HNE, not familiar with that, but I am more familiar with uh, this right here, table four, you see GPX, glutathione peroxidase, which is, I believe, very specific to the mitochondria. And what you're seeing here is almost a doubling in the glutathione peroxidase activity um, during the end of the winter swimming session. So SOD increased as well. There's catalase and there's, there's a bunch of different enzymes that increase. Now, I'm not so excited about the mitochondrial enzymes, uh, specifically antioxidants per se. I'm more interested in the fact that this is a mitochondrial-based therapy that has been shown to have a global shift in the ratio of oxidative stress to antioxidant-related enzymes. I think that's more, most important as opposed to looking at one enzyme in isolation. What is the overall phenotype or the overall expression or pattern here that we're seeing? And it seems that cold immersions increased levels of antioxidant-related enzymes and decreased levels of pro-oxidants, which is helpful. 
And so it's just another tool. And that might be why people with joint pain, with musculoskeletal pain, with injuries, why they feel better when they either use ice acutely or when they chronically go into an ice bath or do winter open swimming, which I think is helpful. Okay, so in, in closing, and then we're gonna get to the tactics here, Cold exposure increases various antioxidant enzymes as well as glutathione. And that's been known since, I mentioned earlier, since the 1990s. This has been long known that getting cold on purpose increases glutathione. Okay, we also know that mitochondrial dysfunction is a hallmark of metabolic disease, neurodegenerative disease, as well as cancer. A lot of the mitochondria and tumor cells are deranged dysfunctional. Now, could that be due to the gene expression of the tumor cells, or could it be that the deranged mitochondria is altering the phenotype of the cell leading to a, a tumor cell formation or the change in the genes? It's probably the latter, especially if you read uh, various works by Travis Christofferson and, and, and so forth that I'll link below. Phenomenal book, Tripping Over the Truth. Now, the thing that was highlighted in this article is consistency is key. The cadence, if the cadence for you is just once a week because that's all you have time for, go get cold once a week. Go to your friend's house and say, hey, we're going to jump in the lake today. I know it's winter. We're going to do it anyway. Or just do a very long, a long cold shower one day a week. I will say that there was a randomized study that looked at and randomized people to take cold showers in a workplace environment or not take cold showers. And the, and the people who took cold showers had a significant reduction and cold and sick days during the cold and flu season. So there is some benefits with cold showers. You don't necessarily have to jump in a frozen lake. Uh, you can just do this with showers. Now, if we want to think about how to ramp up into uh, doing this more, you might want to liken cold immersion therapy to exercise. You know, if you want to run a marathon this spring or do Boston, New York marathon, whatever, you're not going to start running 24 miles tomorrow. You're going to slowly, if you've never done anything, start walking, then start doing some runs and slowly build up your volume. The same is true for cold immersions. The first time you do this, you might only tolerate five seconds of a cold shower. That's fine. Most people start there. Then you slowly ramp up to it. And your ability to adapt to it is showing you that your physiology is responding by improving mitochondrial function and the ability to tolerate the cold. That's the purpose. You know, I could, I do 90 seconds every morning, right? Without question now, it's so good for my joints, low back pain, mood, circadian rhythm, and so forth. I'm telling you, when I started in 2012, I might have lasted five seconds in the tank. So this takes a while to build up to this. So just because someone is doing something extreme doesn't mean that you need to start there. Start with a cold shower. It's a great uh, mental exercise. Now, what are some tools that you can you know, look into? There's the ice barrel. Uh, I started out with a galvanized stock tank and filled it with rainwater. Literally, I had a, a gutter rerouted into the thing. Uh, then uh, that you know, saved on water and so forth. Water is not cheap uh, here in Washington state. Uh, and then I invested in a $10,000 Morosco Forge because I use it every day. So that, that to me was a great investment. And then we have the sauna. I have friends coming over all the time and people we podcast with, we contrast all the time. It's I've definitely gotten it, its value out of that. Um, so that's where you can start. And I think it's something that we should all be doing, my friends. Uh, the ability to, you know, tolerate thermal stress uh, is healthy. We know that that people that live in thermal neutral conditions and the inability to tolerate any cold or extreme heat uh, is a marker of lack of resilience. If you can't tolerate getting cold, I, I don't mean something's wrong with you, but you need to work on that. That is a symptom. That is a symptom. It's like saying, oh, I can't exercise to get out of breath or I get so tired. That's a symptom that something might be wrong and you should address it. You should fix it as opposed to just continue to ignore it. So, Hopefully you found this study quite interesting. Thank you to the scientists in Poland for conducting interesting research on something that a lot of people uh, are doing now. And uh, I'm happy to see that cold immersions, this therapy, this practice is starting to take off. This is where, you know, I think keto was maybe in 2016. It's a lot of people are doing this. And I think it's really cool to see because chronic smoldering inflammation is the reason why many people don't feel well. And this is a tool that we can use to mitigate that, it appears. So again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for subscribing. And we will catch you in a future episode down the road. Have a great day. Bye now. Hey, hey.